this is Chris, your buddy and the guy behind your channel, 1235 The German Modeler. Finally guys, I'm back with another video. I was about to make one in March when the whole thing with COVID started, but then I got so busy with my real job. <laughs> yeah, I do have a real job. Anyway, good news first, since March we got another 350 subscribers and we're now slowly but steadily advancing towards 1000 subscribers. Yay! We're still a small community though, of friends here, but to me you are a very important community. You have sent so many nice and encouraging comments and I'm so incredibly grateful for that. However, one thing I must admit, and that is that my greatest admirer and my number one fan is my brother's son, Paul. I'm his hero with my World War II dioramas. So it is for him, but of course also for you, that it is now time to put another video out there and onto my channel. So, what have I got in mind? The Eastern Front. Truth is, I have done enough on the Western Front and it is now time to engage with some Russian activity. The topic is going to be Operation Kutuzov, which took place in summer of 1943 and was the first of the two counter-offensives launched by the Red Army to deal with the German Kursk Offensive. This Red Army operation commenced on July the 12th, 1943, in the central Russian upland and was directed against Army Group Center of the German Wehrmacht. In the heart of this counteroffensive was the city of Kutuzov, which was heavily destroyed during this operation and its subsequent battles. So what I wanted is to build a part of this city center into which I will later add a Tiger One as the main attraction and masterpiece. For sure, I will add some Germans and some Russians as well to get some action in there. In this video, however, I will focus on the diorama build. So let's get on with it. Okay, well, first off, I'm gonna show you uh, different pictures of how I try to rearrange the diorama uh, with the different uh, bits and pieces that I had. I had some old Italeri plastic kits um, uh, and I made a mold out of those plastic kits. But I also made molds out of bits and pieces of other parts that I had. I don't even remember where they came from. But I also made uh, separate molds out of parts of the Italeri kits. And then I uh, newly positioned them with existing parts and I made completely new parts. Um, once I had um, put uh, plaster into those molds and I have uh, casted those new pieces, I rearranged them on the diorama so that I could figure out what I would like the most. And ultimately I decided to make a part of a street uh, where one half is destroyed and the other one say not yet. <laughs> and then I added a tiger tank just for um, getting an idea as to how I want to later on add the tiger tank and also how the different bits and pieces that I molded, um, how they make sense uh, when arranged uh, next to the tiger tank. What was probably the biggest and most difficult project was to build the street. I made that out of cobblestone and the reason was that I didn't want to buy one. Uh, I wanted to make it completely my own street, totally authentic. And so what I done, I put every piece of cobblestone together. I glued it together. As you can see, I made one square made another mold out of that square and then I uh, made different uh, squares from raisin uh, and enough parts of course as you can see to have my street finished. Then uh, to add some authenticity to the street I also added uh, manhole covers and drain covers and also to the boardwalk that I also wanted to uh, make my own. I added corner pieces, so I fouled them down so that they're a little rounded on the edges and then made them the cornerstones of the boardwalk. 
All right, then the first color that I used was through the primer. I basically primed everything with a spray in gray color. And after that, I have used XF66 light gray from Tamiya with XF2 flat white. And I've used that to spray brush different shades on the uh, different walls. Um, I then put hairspray over everything and then I washed it down with uh, pure water. Uh, to make uh, the walls uh, look used. Then on some uh, part of the diorama, as you can see here on the right hand side, it was not as high as the boardwalk, so I added, added a, a piece of wood. Uh, the most challenging part I really have to say was to find the right red colors for the bricks. And for that I've used XF7 flat red, XF9 hull red, XF64 red brown, XF3 flat yellow. Once again, I really have to say that to me it was the biggest challenge to find the right red, reddish colors for the bricks. Um, I couldn't find any real reference, so I just mixed those colors together that I just told you and it worked out fine. Um, then I have used a different uh, gray color together with a wooden tan. Uh, to build uh, the top of the walls, basically the shindles. And then I've used, as you can see, a bunch of different beige and gray tones uh, to color the other uh, darker stones uh, in the wall. Then on the next picture, you can see that I have used my hobby saw and I've taken some of the same bricks that I used for the cornerstones for the boardwalk. I have cut them down and I made shindles uh, for the two pillars next to the wall. The next step was then to build, uh, not to build, to paint uh, the door. Uh, for that I have used uh, XF71 cockpit green. Uh, of course, uh, also the famous Tamiya panel line color. Uh, to give it some dimension and what was really important after I added on um, um, again wooden tan the uh, AK wash for wood and that really helped uh, to make the door really look uh, real um, on the uh, cockpit green I used um, uh, rust wash from MIG and that I think uh, ultimately did a real good job to the door all right now moving on so i've used as you can see again a bunch of different gray colors on the walls i've also used them on the pillars next to the fountain and of course i've used lots of different grayish tones on the cobble uh, stone street um, i wanted to give a lot of detail to the cobblestone street as you know i've invested a lot of work uh, to make it as authentic as possible. Uh, then uh, next to the street uh, where I have the fountain, um, those pieces of the wall um, are on a wooden base. So what I had to do, I had to put some soil, some earth uh, onto the wood. And I did that with MIG acrylic mud. And then on the cobblestone street, but also on the walls and pillars, once again, I've used a lot of different uh, pigments, mostly though black and burnt sienna. And um, I've used uh, different brushes to put them in, also a makeup brush and the excess I took off with a sponge. Uh, to make sure it sticks really well on the walls, I've used enamel thinner um and that was a really good choice um to make the pigment stay on on a permanent basis um so the pictures themselves are pretty much self-explanatory so just have a look at how it looks and what i've used and then i'll move on with what i used uh, for the grass and the bushes Alrighty now talking about the bushes and the grass so I've basically used uh, two main brands, uh, Mini Nature and Diorama Precepe, and I'm really a fan of the quality of those two products. 
Um, what I've then also used, I've used the uh, Grass Master from Noch, uh, basically to put on all the grass. And then I've used some ivy that I uh, painted by hand to make it a bit more realistic. Um, and then on the next picture, you can see that where the broken house stands, um, I needed to put on some more plaster, uh, basically to represent all the rubble and uh, everything that's uh, a leftover of the broken uh, house. Um, so I've added on a lot of plaster and on top of that, I have used um, again, um, uh, Vallejo um, for uh, the mud basically the soil here I use the uh, dark brown earth texture and then after that I've made my own mix of different rubble and soil that I had in the house and I've just used that to um, get a really good base that looks as realistic as possible I added that on with um, uh, wood uh, glue and I've added a lot of water in the wood glue basically as an adhesant to make sure that all the soil stays on the plaster that I've added earlier on. Again, I hope most of the pictures are self-explanatory, guys. Okay, then coming towards the end of the uh, diorama built, the last couple of pictures. The first one here shows that I've tried to imitate moss on the fountain. Um, I've used, uh, again, some... Uh, green uh, flocks of grass, really small. I put them uh, into a, a grinder, uh, basically made them even thinner. And then I used XF61 uh, moss type dark green color and I painted over the greenish color, which was not natural. And then uh, on top of the previously added uh, plaster, um, where I also used the Vallejo um, uh, earth uh, texture, I have used a lot of rubble once again, and I've really used uh, bricks um, that were actually not destroyed before, but I used a hammer to make them really small, added other gravel and uh, just made my own mix. And I used a lot of reddish pigments that again are from Vallejo. I love those products. And uh, those you actually use that uh, the pigment colors for rust and that kind of stuff. So I've used that and that was basically uh, everything that I put on uh, to simulate uh, the debris of the broken house. And uh, ultimately I've added on uh, the wooden borders of the diorama. I've used acrylic black paint uh, that I usually use. And uh, once again, uh, pigments uh, for the final touches um, of the diorama. And then just uh, two more pictures and my last pictures to explain to you that I have uh, used uh, Vallejo uh, water texture uh, for the fountain and uh, there's the result again you can see how it looks on the picture so uh, this is the end of the photos that I wanted to share uh, once again uh, folks that's all now uh, before we come to the end of the video I quickly want to show you a little teaser of my Tiger One built, which should be the main focus in the final diorama. But the most important part that's about to come now is the link that follows at the end of this video. And why is that? Well, simply because it will show you the final diorama of the Kutuzov city, uh, how uh, it looks like with all the after all the explanations I've just given you. I hope you will enjoy the final build. Anyway, all right, that's all for today. Thank you for taking the time to tune in and listen to my update. I wish you the very, very best in these challenging times. Please stay safe and healthy. Auf Wiedersehen, says Chris, your buddy behind your channel, 1235, the German modeler. <laughs>